The invasion is tomorrow, and you won't let us land with our unit? Your old unit, Sergeant. You three are no longer combat engineers. You are now invaluable OSS assets. Your orders for the invasion are to brief and advise, not participate. Is that why we have this overgrown babysitter? The MP is a request from General Donovan himself. He knows about your special relationship with orders you don't agree with. Permission to speak freely, sir? No. I'll think he was gonna say this is complete bullshit. Horseshit, actually, but close enough, Holly. Gentlemen. That beach tomorrow will be a meat grinder, and you know it. Our unit is short-handed without us. They're going to get killed. That's enough, Sergeant. You're dismissed. The sergeant is the bravest soldier I've ever known. You know he still carries German shrapnel from the Western Front in his back? Causes him pain every waking moment. But you'll never hear him complain. He does his best to hide it. But there's one thing, one simple truth, he can't hide from. Sir? Ali, there's one certain, absolute, unbreakable truth in this universe, and the sergeant knows it better than anyone. You ever wonder why someone with his experience doesn't carry a much higher rank? 1936, the Spanish Civil War. The Nazis get involved in a big way, using it as a test run for their new planes and tanks. The United States stays neutral, of course, but the sergeant's son, his only son is one of these idealistic young men that runs off and volunteers to fight. With little or no training, these boys are going up against a fascist juggernaut. When he hears the news about his son volunteering, the sergeant asks permission to go after him. It's denied, so Sarge goes AWOL, hops on a tramp steamer to Spain, lands on the coast, and races to the front line. When he finally gets there, he learns his son was killed the day before, in a Stuka attack. I had no idea. I'm the one who got him out of the stockade after his court-martial. As you might imagine, the sergeant was a very tough father. Never told his son that he loved him. And now, he lives every day with the fact that he never will. So as I said, the sergeant knows the truth better than anyone. It's a truth that transcends ideology and borders. And that truth is, war kills young men. Why don't you two go see Huxley? Dismissed. You're being sent to advise the 82nd Airborne on what you saw in France. But then, your orders are to come back here. I wish I could help you. I wish I could tell you that Colonel Ebbets is friends with the airbase commander. And that the deployment orders are waiting for you inside the tower. And I wish I could tell you I'll be waiting for you aboard ship in the channel with your own goodie bags. Ah, your fifty sidearm. The semi-automatic 1911 <laughs> pistol. Reliable and accurate. It's quite useful at mid to long ranges with both hands and at short ranges with one hand. The magazine holds seven rounds. Always keep it loaded. Huxley, what is the lieutenant looking at? This is a Tiger tank. One of the most lethal and dangerous weapons in the German arsenal. If you stumble onto one, my advice is find a place to hide. Get on the radio and put some P-51.
This is a model of Dog Red Sector, where your unit is landing tomorrow morning as a part of the first wave. Your objective is to clear the beach of all these obstacles, clearing a path for Allied tanks to roll ashore. I've read the casualty forecasts. I'm sure you know. It's going to be terrible. Huxley, what is the lieutenant holding? It's officially known as the LCVP, which stands for Landing Craft Vehicle Personnel. Every single one was built in New Orleans by Andrew Higgins and his Higgins Industries. So everybody just calls it a Higgins boat. I've overheard General Eisenhower refer to it as one of the keys to winning the war. We couldn't invade France without them. Huxley, what is the lieutenant looking at? The C-47. Another one of the crucial weapons in our invasion arsenal. These C-47s are going to drop thousands of men behind enemy lines tonight. Then come back and tow thousands more across the channel in gliders. This afternoon, you, Sarge, and Ollie will brief the men flying on Lieutenant Jimmy Patterson's plane, a pilot who's worked with the OSS before. He'll make sure you get out of there in time to catch up with your old unit. Huxley, what is that? Lieutenant, here's a quick refresher on the work of a combat engineer. Follow the instructions on the board. First, place an explosive block on this heavy beach obstacle known as a hedgehog. Attach the fuse container to your chest, then pull a fuse from it. Stick the fuse into the explosive, then activate it. Now, our tanks can come ashore. Good luck getting away from your minder. I'll see you in the channel. I always thought the number of takeoffs was supposed to match the number of landings, but I guess you boys in the 82nd are the exception to that rule. I know this is the first time some of you will see combat. I know you're scared. Well, let me be clear with all of you, I'm scared too. Never forget, the Nazis are smart. They didn't take over half the civilized world by accident. They are the best trained and best equipped fighting force the world has ever seen, and they are the most evil. That's why we're here. We're here to free those they've enslaved. And to avenge those they've killed. I look forward to seeing you all in France. That was very moving, Sergeant. We need to get you back to headquarters. I have orders to return you to Whitehall before 1900 hours. Roger that, Private, of course. But before we go, the Colonel asked me to pick up a bottle of sherry from the Air Base Commander. Mm -mm. No, Sergeant. No can do. What's the problem? It's right over there in the tower. I have extremely specific orders. I am to escort you to the flight line, return you to the Jeep, and back to London. Because of your special history, we are not to deviate from that plan. It's just a bottle of sherry. You want to be the one to disappoint the Colonel when we come back without it? <laughs> I know I don't. Oh, what about the Lieutenant? Come on, war hero. Okay. Lieutenant, we'll meet you back at the Jeep. Can I drive back to London? We've been over this before, Sergeant. Absolutely not. Just part way. No! The Colonel sure loves his sherry. Just tired of this. 
distinguish which weather. It's just too much. I'm from Barstow. We don't get rain out there. <laughs> right. Well, the high pressure system is going to go here to the north. Then we should be clear. But Sergeant? Sergeant, Sergeant, please. Please, Sergeant. Sergeant, please exit the vehicle. But I really want to drive. I am not going to ask you again, sir. Just in time. Sergeant. Sergeant. Private, would you like to see a magic trick? What? Look what's behind my ear. Grenade! Grenade! So, where to, Ollie? Weymouth, in Dorset. Weymouth. Well, it's gonna be close. So, how much trouble do you think we're in? Quite a bit, Ollie, quite a bit. We're headed one of two places. France, or the stockade. Lieutenant. You need to find the present the Quartermaster left for us. Find those supplies, or we'll be attacking Nazi Germany with just our wits. Hello there, Lieutenant. I didn't know you were back. Life is usually a pageant of idiots and fools. But occasionally, you find yourself in the company of good people. And then, anything is possible. Come on down, Lieutenant. We're not gonna leave without you. The old squad's here! Hey, sir, we can't believe it. No one knew what happened to you after Tunisia. Oh, we joined the OS. We got a new assignment. Now we're back. Men, the clock is running. We're shoving off. I know it's going to be a tough job ahead, but it's good for us to be together. That's all we can ask for. Mm-hmm. 